All right, welcome back. I have one more video regarding um, the coordinate systems. Um, so one thing you should be aware of are these so-called constant coordinate surfaces, or sometimes you'll hear constant coefficient surfaces, uh, though I think constant coordinate is more descriptive. Um, so th just, just kind of a foreshadowing, Sometimes we'll have like a, an electromagnetic field that goes from um, maybe water to air through air, and there's an interface there, then the, you know the separating boundary between the water and the air. So that would be the surface, and we would describe that surface as you know a constant coordinate surface. So we need to be aware of those things. And um, I've got these beautiful figures here drawn behind me. Let's 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 take a look at those. Um, so there's not a lot of space here, so I don't really have a lot of math to write down uh, in this video. So, um, and, and just keep in mind, everything that I'm going to say here uh, is in my notes as well. So don't feel like you have to write all of this down. So let's, let's draw our attention towards the Cartesian uh, picture over here. That's the, the far left. So um, the idea is this, that surfaces are generated when one coordinate variable is held constant. So remember in the Cartesian coordinate system we have x, y, and z. So if so, um, x, in the way I have it drawn, x is kind of coming out towards us of positive x, and then negative x is kind of going in to the screen away from us. Positive y is going to your right, and positive z is going up. And um, so, so let's say we held x constant, maybe like two or one or something. Um, and and y and z, the other variables, are allowed to vary. In that case, if we held it at one, that means that x has to be one unit towards you. So it comes out towards you, but y and z can be wherever. Well, and, I, and again, I, pa I, um, I encourage you to pause the video to think about this, but what that makes then is this green plane. And so everywhere on that green plane has the um, property that x is you know one unit or whatever we said it was whatever we fixed it at it's one unit out from the origin but then y and z can be wherever they want right so that's the constant x plane all right and um, you know you can repeat this for constant y if we held y fixed then then uh, you know it's left or right maybe right two units. So all of these points uh, on the red plane have the property that they're to the right by two units, but then x and z can vary. So it makes this plane in red. And you can repeat this for z, which makes this plane in blue. Now when you, when you have two surfaces um, intersecting one another, that makes a line. So so just concentrate on two of the planes um, here. How about, uh, how about the blue plane and the red plane? So if you if you just look, it's, forget about the green plane for a second. If you just look at the the blue plane and the red plane, where they intersect is this infinitely long line. Now I've I've I haven't drawn the planes infinitely long, so of course of course you can't draw the planes infinitely long. So the line then the intersecting line is not infinitely long in the figure. The the line that I'm talking about is line R Q. Okay, that's the intersection of the constant Z plane and the constant Y plane. Now uh, and and you can repeat this of course for any two planes. Pick any two planes and they'll make a line, a straight line. In, in our course, when I say line, it might not be, it shouldn't imply that it's straight. But when, when you're dealing with planes, the intersection is a straight line. Now, if you bring in the third plane, so all three planes together, where they intersect is a point. So, and that is that point P here. All right. Now, turn your attention to the middle figure, which is cylindrical coordinates. So remember in cylindrical coordinates, um, we have three numbers that we specify, which are, which are rho, phi, and z. And so a lot of what we said about the Cartesian coordinate system will apply here, but it's a little bit different. Now when we fix rho, let's talk about rho first, 
rho is the distance from the z-axis. So if we fixed it at, say, one unit or whatever, that means we're one unit away from the z-axis. So that makes a circle at first, right? A circle, right? One unit away from the z-axis is a circle. You know, like you're a, like like you you tie your your dog up to a stake that's one unit, and the leash is one unit long. Okay, so the dog can go in a circle around the stake. But um, that doesn't tell the whole picture since z can vary, right? We're just fixing rho at one unit. Since z can vary, then we can have any height. So actually what this makes is a hollow cylinder when we fix rho. So that's shown in green. That's a constant rho shown in green. All right, well, we can also fix, let's say, the azimuthal angle, which is phi. And remember, that's the angle that uh, the, the, the point makes with um, the x-axis. So when, when we fix the azimuthal angle, that makes a semi-infinite plane shown in red. So the, this plane shown in red has a fixed azimuthal angle, right? All these points on the red plane have, have a fixed phi. And it's semi-infinite because uh, it doesn't extend into the screen, right? Because it, it only extend because we're fixing phi, going into the phi would be, you know, a different phi. So it comes out towards us, but it does not go in. So uh, that is a semi-infinite plane shown in red. And then, similar to the Cartesian coordinate system, if we fix z, then we have this this blue plane again, like we did over here. Now, when you when you fix two um, coordinates, then you have a line, but it might be curved. A line in our again, a line in our course just means you know a path. And so in this case, uh, if you look at let's say um, uh, the constant z plane and the constant rho plane. Where do they intersect? Well, they intersect in this uh, this Q P R, and it's it's actually a um, you can't see behind the uh, cil cylinder, but it's actually a circle. So that's that's the line that I'm talking about here. It's it's this circle um, of the intersect. It's like if you sliced a cylinder, right? So um, I would encourage you to think about what do you get when you um, when you fix phi and rho, or what do you get when you fix phi and z? Think about those things. But then when you fix all three of them, then again you you narrow down a point, and that would be point P here when you fix all three, because you don't have any variation in any of the um, coordinates anymore because you fixed all three, so you've narrowed down a point, you specified a point. All right, now coming here towards the uh, spherical picture. Again, remember in spherical coordinates, we have three uh, numbers that specify the point. And so that was um, r and theta and phi, the co-latitude and the azimuthal angles. So it, r was the distance from the origin. So if you fix r, what you've got is a sphere then, because by definition, a sphere has a, a you know a fixed radius, so you fix R, you've got this hollow sphere in green, shown in green there. And um, you can think about it if you fix the the uh, colatitude angle, which is uh, which is uh, the angle it makes with z axis, and everything else is allowed to vary like phi and R, then what you get is this cone in red. Okay, you get a cone there. And uh, again, if you fix the uh, azimuthal angle phi, you get um, you get a constant, you know, you, or you get this constant semi-infinite plane, which was shown in red in the cylindrical coordinates. Now it's shown in blue over here. All right. So now again, if you fix two of them, so the intersection of two of those things makes a line. So um, what I've shown here is the intersection of the constant r surface with the constant phi surface. So when, when you fix r and when you fix phi, what you get is this line r, p, q. OK? 
okay, RPQ there. It's not a straight line, but it, we would call it a line anyway, RPQ. And uh, then if you fix all three, and this should come as no surprise by now, when you fix all three coordinates, now you've locked down a point. So the intersection of three of these constant coordinate surfaces, in this case, is this point P that I have there. So I guess that's all we need to say for right, or yeah, that's all we need to say about um, the coordinate system. And um, what we're going to we're going to we're going to turn our attention to now is uh, is calculus using these um, coordinate systems, but not just single variable calculus. We're going to we're going to bring in multivariable calculus, or what's called vector calculus. And uh, once we finish vector calculus, then we'll be ready to apply all this to electromagnetics. So stay, stay tuned.